Let's walk through a case study for a HR dashboard that we need to build. Now, of course, you could be building a, a report. You might need to do a presentation to tell your data story. In this case study, we're going to look at a human resources dashboard. So, of course, we're going to start using the ACTED framework. So, if you remember, ACTED, audience, context, tail, envision, delivery. We want to follow that flow, that structure in general. There are some times you might want to deviate. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep it simple and follow that structure. So we know we have the end in sight. We, we're going to build a dashboard. But we want to start with understanding the audience. So to understand our audience, we're going to follow the framework and the structure. And a great way to do that is to use these templates that we have. Remember, you download them to, for free. And you know, you'd basically end up laying these out uh, beside each other. So we'll start firstly with our data attitudes. You can tell. We use cards A2 to A7. And um, for my scenario, we've got a, a bunch of people that are data cautious. Not exactly data skeptic, but our audience, they're HR managers. They don't use data an awful lot in this example. And we want to take note of that. Now, when we're looking at this, of course, every card tells you a little bit of information about your audience. So if we're picking someone who's data cautious, on this card it says, data cautious individuals may have concerns about data privacy, security, or accuracy. They tend to be more skeptical of data-driven insights and require more evidence to be convinced. When creating data stories for a data cautious audience, focus on addressing their concerns and building trust. And of course, every single card has a tip. Tip to address data cautious individuals Provide clear and concise data sources and demonstrate how your insights have been validated. Highlight the potential benefits and value of your data story and address any potential risks or concerns. Of course, we have to keep this in mind. Every time we pick a card, you have to review it and understand it. So you're taking note of how you need to address those particular characteristics of your audience. Let's look at data literacy. A cards A8 to A13. So if you need an overview of the card, you go to the head card, which is for this one, data literacy, A8. It tells you a little bit about things you need to be conscious of uh, for data literacy. And we're saying the, these people, they're data novices. Now, what does a data novice mean? A data novice is someone who, with limited experience or knowledge in data analysis and interpretation. When creating data stories for a data novice audience, focus on simplifying complex comp uh, concepts, providing context, and using easy to understand visualizations to help them grasp the insights. See, this is all helpful stuff for later on when we move on to the other categories of our acted framework. Some tips, use straightforward language, clear visuals, and relatable examples to help novice audiences understand the ins insights in your data story. Great. Okay, so let's carry on. On to our next category, decision-making types, A14 to A17. So um, this is for a, a group of HR managers. They are more on the tactical side. All right, so our audience, now of course you can remember to read through each of these. And there are specific things we want to be concerned about with a tactical audience. And always remember every single card has suggested related cards on the back that you might want to look at and consider. Okay, so if you're not sure, anytime you're picking cards, look at the back and start to think about other ways you can um, uh, relate to other concepts. Audience seniority is next. Again, A18, A23. Uh, these people are mid-level in career, right? And there's going to be certain tips and things we might want to consider for mid-level audiences. And technical proficiency, this one's really important. Now, this is a non-technical audience, right? So it's worth having a quick read of what, it, what a non-technical audience cares about. Non-technical audience has some experience with data analysis and technical concepts, but may not be experts. When creating data stories for them, provide context and clarify complex compl concepts as needed. Be cautious not to oversimplify the information as these uh, individuals have a basic understanding of the subject matter. So bear in mind, subject matter expertise versus technical expertise. Tips, use technical terms and concepts, but be prepared to offer explanations or clarifications for audience who may not be familiar with the subject. Okay, so we got a non-technical audience and then some generational factors, right? So some things we might want to consider based off the, the age. Now, this is one where you may have more than one card. Okay, so uh, for 
these folks were thinking they're more millennials and uh, you might have a few gen x folks in there maybe it depends for now i'm just going to leave the millennials psychological factors now you see you could have several right so that's why we have space for two and so let's look at these um there might be some cognitive bias that we have to address right so do people have preconceived notions about things um, maybe they have confirmation bias, availability bias, right? So other types of bias um, that we may need to consider. And of course, these cards always give tips in how to address them. So that's our audience in our example that we're talking about here. Let's move on to context. Now, it's going to be the exact same process that we follow here. We're going to go and look at setting the context. So anytime uh, for, for this type of dashboard that we're building, Right, it's for HR managers. Let's go look at the types of things that matter for them. Now, we looked at someone who is data cautious. Right, so a type of context we might want to consider is, well, let's give them as much background detail as we possibly can right, and make sure they're, they're comfortable there. Um, but also, it's good to discuss the opportunity. What's the opportunity um, of why we're doing this and why you would want this sort of uh, data available to you? Uh, existing trends so and uh, we have c7 to c12 so what's any historical context we might want to have in there in our story um, market conditions are certainly relevant to hr and uh, anything else we might want to consider maybe the competitive landscape okay so this is one where you could have several cards it makes sense you might have several cards moving on to the types of context so there's probably a level of geographic context that we care about and yeah maybe we could just leave it there for um for that one and then if you want to you could add more context there's a space there for it right so um let's say socioeconomic context well that's a whole separate subcategory uh, audience context and again it's important going to be read each of these right you need to go through and read each of these as you pick them socioeconomic factors well organizational con context maybe um, yeah we can leave it at that and then values and goals of which there are several so we need to make sure we're establishing the goal for why are we why are we doing this why are we presenting this data why is it going to be made available to the hr managers right so we have to understand that it's always good to define the scope and anything else that you want to include such as identifying the message aligning to company values right do you want to define kpis there could be any number of items that's why we have two two here for values and goals right there could be several you might want to include now because uh, we have a data cautious individual uh, audience and they're a data novice we want to pay particular attention to the data context and make sure we're letting them know you know, various things like what data sources we're pulling from, as well as any data privacy, data ethics concerns that might exist. Okay, so that's good. Now, with that in mind, we can move on to the next group. So, um, of course, if you have space on your table, you, you know, you'd probably do this in a, a slightly better laid out structure than this. I'm just going to move this, uh, put it over here, and... Um, you could have these laid out all beside each other. So we're going to move on to our next uh, category, which is the telling the tale of our data. And again, similar structure. Now, again, for a HR dashboard for the, the audience we're talking about, let's start looking at the story structure. Um, anytime we're trying to do like a, a story in a dashboard, it's very hard to do in a dashboard it's much easier to do a data story in a presentation all right are in, in different formats so in a day in a dashboard the best we can hope for really is to set up a narrative structure right so a structure that something can happen right that something can emerge and so one thing we want to consider for there is okay well what is a narrative structure uh, you have to be very clear on this when you're building dashboards because it is just not the easiest thing to do to tell a story. On occasion, you're going to get lucky, right? Um, so we're talking more about a narrative structure that you would have when you're starting building a dashboard. Some uh, characters, so if we look at uh, A8 to 11, um, right? So one thing you want to look at is emphasizing insights to our to our people, 
right? So that's a suitable thing that you could do in a dashboard. Techniques and devices, so 12, um, up to various different um, ways that you can tell your story using different techniques. So storytelling techniques, analogies, uh, metaphors, uh, the emotional arc. Um, all right, so various different ways that you might want to look at uh, telling your story within your, your dashboard. Now, Hero's Journey is a great one, and it works well in a dashboard. And just imagine, just real quick, right? So you're, it's a HR dashboard, you're talking about people, right? So um, let's say you see there's something going on with a certain person, certain department, right? You click on that person in the dashboard, right? So then you can take them on a, a journey, the hero's journey. Well, why, why is that employee, let's say, at risk of attrition? Um, what elements do you need to understand to, under to extrapolate why they're in that situation, right? So maybe they're not happy with their manager. Maybe they're uh, changed um, managers many times. Maybe they haven't taken enough PTO, right? The hero's journey is a great way to make something relatable to a non-technical audience. Um, so, and you could pick another. In this case, I'm not. So, um, techniques and devices. Moving on to storytelling elements. So, T21. Um, it's always good, like to have some degree of look, um, you know, looking at various patterns and trends. All right. So, what's happened historically? What do I need to be conscious of? <coughs> um, any anomalies? Any cause and effect? Right now, you can go through all of these, right, and, and see which ones make sense for for you. Um, but quite often, I want to be comparing and correlating things within a HR dashboard. So that's our tale. So moving on from there, so you can start to see how this would come together, right, for your for your HR dashboard. Now we only got the two more left. I'm going to put these the tail cards back. We're going to move on to Envision. Now, there's a lot of cards in the Envision and the Delivery decks, and that's why you can see there's quite a bit of space for the various different uh, areas that we're going to look at here. So firstly, what design principles do I care about? Um, these are E2 to E14. And because you know I'm dealing with a non-technical audience, there's a few things I'm going to make sure that I, I want to do properly. I want, I want to really have very clear titles. And going back to our audience earlier, right? And this is where we start, we have to keep things simple. We have to th keep things very, very clear. So we want to have good legends and uh, keys available, um, right? We want to be very specific about how we label our data and, you know, obviously clear about the scales and, and units, right? So you could have several. Right? There's a lot of cards in, in this category. Then for chart selection, um, right? There's a number of ways you can approach this. So we got a few levels within the Envision category, chart selection is your kind of higher level, and then really getting down to the specific visualization types we might need um, to tell our story, um, or at least to set it up for us. So certainly I want charts for trends. How are things going over time? Um, you know, and another thing I want, because I talked about comparisons previously here in Compare and Correlate, I want charts for comparisons, right? And that's going to tell you what charts you need to look at, right? So it's very helpful that you could then look at, okay, what charts are useful for showing comparisons? Just look at the back of the card. It's going to tell you what charts are good for comparisons. All right? Um, for me, I'm pretty good on this. And maybe I also want like um, ranking. I want to see like a ranking of employees. So what charts would be good for that? And so let's go, let's just move on, start picking some visualization types. Well, it's a dashboard, You're usually going to want to have big numbers, right? So um, let's go pick those, right? So you know, how many employees are at risk of attrition? How many, how, what's our headcount? How many people did we on board this week? Those, those kinds of things. I know I want some sort of ranking, right? So, and, and the ranking, visualization categories, uh, chart selection, I'm picking the bar, horizontal bar. I want some trends, right? So talked about that in the, the other chart types. And foc we're focused on super simple chart types on account of our audience. Right, so we don't want to go doing any any sort of crazy charts. Um, like while this is a very powerful chart to use, the bubble chart, it might not be appropriate for an initial release of a dashboard to a data cautious, data novice audience. Right, so maybe you want to stay away from there. So just keep it simple. Certainly, you don't want to be doing box plots. Right, they're they're, they're a useful chart, but they're uh, highly complex. So my my guidance here on this one is just keep it very very simple. Right, so. 
um, even things like stacked bars are getting a little bit complicated. So focus on simplicity. Keep it simple, right? Um, if you want to compare trends over time, you can use the multiple line chart, for example. And, okay, and then maybe you want to have a, a vertical bar chart for other types of comparisons. We just want to keep it simple. Now, invariably, it's a HR dashboard. We want to see some level of row level detail. Um, I'm going to put in a table, for example, so I can see employee details. That gets us past the envision your story. And let's get on to the final stage here, how we're going to deliver it. So obviously we're following the acted framework step by step to go through this. So preparing for delivery, D2 to D9. Now this one, this one's more going to be more focused on if you're delivering a presentation, right? So it's really, you know, presentation setup, testing technology, time management, securing buy and those sorts of things. However, Getting the clear goals and objectives of why you're doing this is obviously important and, and will apply to any type of delivery method, um, how you're doing it. Engagement techniques, again, more focused on giving presentations, but not just that, right? So if we want to engage people with a dashboard and they're going to be using it over time, um, we also have to be aware, right, that we're driving some level of action and resolution with our dashboard that is not doing nothing like people are looking and going oh isn't that interesting you know that you have some sort of call to action right so it's very very clear what people need to do with the dashboard moving on feedback and improvement so regardless of your delivery method you need some way to get feedback you need some mechanism to do that and also do you have a mechanism for making improvements all right so these are all good for our dashboard and maybe you want to refine your story, you want to measure the impact of your dashboard, right? All of these things are important. Moving on to medium delivery. So how are we going to deliver our dashboard to our audience? Well, more often than not, it's probably going to be email, right? You're going to email it to people, um, right? So we're going to be sharing the dashboard via email. And then it's a dashboard. We've talked about that. So that's the main uh, actual um, medium that we're using to deliver our insights. Moving on to accessibility and inclu inclusivity. So 41 to 46, anything we need to be aware about, um, right? So maybe we want to make sure we have alternative formats because people are using different devices, right? So we're going to keep that in mind. And then delivery device types, we, people are going to be using their desktops and we have some people using the tablets very important consideration to keep in mind and then finally device resolutions right is there anything we need to be aware of here and um, we could say you know medium resolution high resolution we also have to design for let's say portrait and landscape for example now this is a case study that spans all of our uh, five categories what would you do with this right you would need to go now review all of this um, take any notes. So anytime I'm uh, designing a dashboard, HR dashboard in this example, right, I, I'm always going to be referring back to our audience and making sure that everything else we've done is in alignment to our audience and that we are uh, maybe find out that, you know what, a dashboard isn't the appropriate way to do this. We may That may happen, right? So it could happen that for that specific type of audience, maybe a presentation might be better. Right, or maybe some other format or some other way of delivering it. This uh, everything ties back to our audience, right? Our the charts we're picking, this the story um, and narrative structure that we're going to follow, and of course the context. So this gives you like a holistic approach for what you need to be considering to make sure that people are going to be getting value out of your dashboard, right? And that you are actually considering all the elements that are going to be important to get them on board and to get them using data to drive some sort of behavioral change and behavioral impact.